I, this video is an appendix of the first video I did uh, of this series where I talk about uh, how to compile a third-party library using CMake. And I'm doing this video because during the past week I encountered a crash that uh, took me a lot of time to figure out what was wrong and uh, in the end the problem was a misalignment between the ABA. I am structuring this video in two sections. In the first section I'll say right away how I fixed the problem and on the second part I'll explain the details of it. So let's start. The problem was a crash because of a misalignment ABA and the fix was exactly adding wrapping all the includes between Pragma Push platform default packing and Pragma Pop platform default packing. Essentially what these two macros are doing uh, are telling Unreal not to force the alignment. If we check the Unreal Engine documentation, we can see that for legacy reason, Unreal Engine forces 4-byte pack packing on Windows 32. For some reason, even if I am on Windows uh, 64, uh, this is still a problem. And after uh, wrapping uh, the third-party includes of Jolt uh, between Pragma Push and Pragma Pop platform default packing, I have fixed the problem. So if you are integrating a third-party library, making sure that in any case you wrap your includes between these two macros. Now let's start with the second part of the video where I discuss about the, uh, the crash. And uh, the crash that uh, I experienced uh, was here in the Jolt character component. I did not explain uh, this component so far. This is a new component where, uh, that represents a kinematic body that is essentially a character moving around. This component has a move character function that accepts delta time and the velocity. And according to the velocity, the character moves, the kinematic body moves. So, super simple. The crash was exactly at this function, character virtual extended update. The moment I call this function, the crash occurred. And it was super weird because, first of all, everything else worked just fine. Uh, remember, I had the, all the rigid bodies already working and um, I had the uh, three mesh collisions, uh, com uh, compound shapes, so pretty complex body and I was unable to explain the crash at the beginning. So I started to debug it and after some time I figured out that the problem was caused by uh, not a number and the not a number was the velocity. If we check my code we can see that on the line uh, 144 I am setting the velocity on the virtual uh, character using velocity in meter. Debugging it I was able to see that the velocity that I was setting was perfectly fine. It was not not a number. And if we check what set linear velocity is doing, we can see that it's not doing much. It's just taking the velocity in and setting it. But the moment it set the velocity, the linear velocity read by extended update was not a number. And this told to me that uh, the problem was an ABI uh, misalignment or a broken ABI. Before diving into this problem, uh, I, I want to explain quickly what a, the ABI is. Here I have prepared this uh, diagram and uh, by typing what ABI is uh, on Google, we can read that the ABI, uh, uh, which is application binary interface, is therefore a contract between the two modules between Unreal Engine and Jolt Physics. These contracts tell each module how to read the memory that, remember, is shared between the modules. If we can see, uh, by checking this diagram, we can see that the, the memory is indeed shared and the way 
the each module reads the memory is described described by the ABA, which I like to and which I like to imagine like uh, the header file. Uh, for example, uh, we we can use the character vir virtual that the character virtual is actually the object that uh, where I am calling extended update, which is the crushing function. And the character virtual indeed has a bunch of variables. All these variable like backface mode, predictive contact distance, and everyone, every other one, uh, define uh, allocate. Basically, each variable has allocation into the memory, and this location is indeed described by the ABA, like we are seeing here. So the problem is that when the ABA is misaligned for some reason. We can see that the module read and write the memory in a different position on the uh, in, in a different position respect on the other module, and this causes a lot of trouble, a lot of um, undefined behavior that leads to crash that are difficult to uh, to debug. So, for example, if we take the uh, yellow box here that may represent any variable, we can see that the written memory from a real engine is different from the one that Jolt Physics is actually reading. And the cause of this misalignment can be uh, three or more, but uh, I think that the most common one are the uh, are these three. So the first one, the two modules uh, use a different preprocessor defines. I'll explain this uh, in a moment. The second one is class and structure alignment. And the third one is the uh, different STD uh, standard library version. This is really rare. However, the different library version may mean that some structure provided indeed by the standard library use different parameters and these different parameters uh, uh, generate a different ABA, uh, ABI. Sorry. So again, I think this is rare, but I, I wanted to include it anyway. So let's focus on the one uh, on the first point that I think it's the most common case. Essentially, what is happening here is that when we compile Jolt, we compile with a specific uh, set of preprocessor defined. Let's take again the character virtual class as example. We can see that we have a bunch of variables like the predictive contact distance that is a float then we have uint and again uint float and so on usually float and uint are well defined sides so there is nothing weird in this case but there are cases like rvec3 that are quite more complex than the float if we check uh, what rvec3 is doing we can right away notice that here we have our preprocessor defined a macro, if you want, uh, that is called JPH double precision. When this is defined, the RVEC3 is indeed a DVEC3, which is basically a vector3 using double, using double. Instead, when JPH double precision is not defined, we can see that RVEC3 is a normal VEC3 using float. So the size of the RVEC3 depends on this preprocessor defined. Now, when we compile JPH double precision, when we compile Jolt using JPH double precision, we need to make sure that the JPH double precision preprocessor defined is also defined on Unreal so that when we include the uh, real.h header, we can see, Unreal can see the proper ABI um, and can properly import the, uh, the character virtual class. And However, this was not the problem because I have verified this many times and indeed the problem was not uh, caused by uh, uh, the preprocessor defined misalignment. Everything was properly uh, and correctly set. So 
there is yet another problem uh, that may cause um, an ABI that may broke the ABI, which is the class structure alignment. In order to explain this, I have created this small diagram that uh, shows that with a different alignment, uh, we can see that the memory essentially has a different length, a different width, if you will. Uh, and f since it has a different uh, width, each variable is positioned differently. If the memory is uh, uh, wider, like on the right side, we can see that the variables are laid out differently. So uh, this was exactly the problem I had in my library, because in Jolt, um, the memory was laid out like on the right side. And indeed, the, the class size was, was smaller. While in Unreal, for Unreal, the ABA, the memory alignment, the, the memory structure layout uh, was different, resulting for with uh, a much bigger class. Um, and uh, as I said before, I have fixed the problem by inserting Pragma Push Platform default packing and uh, Pragma Pop. These allow me to uh, remove the force that Unreal puts on its own classes and basically make sure that uh, it uses what Jolt library is using. Now, in, before concluding, I want to show that uh, while working on, the, uh, on this problem, I have essentially refactor it. What I did here was to remove all the custom implementation I have explained during the first video and instead I, uh, I am now using uh, Unreal for CMake plugin. I did this for two reasons. The first one is that the code indeed is now much easier and uh, you can see that all I am doing here is defining all the CMake options needed for uh, setting up the Jolt, the Jolt compilation. And then I am just specifying it on the CMake target using the add function. And then all it remains is uh, the preprocessor definitions. I am just setting the preprocessor definitions according to the uh, compilation used for Jolt. The second reason why I wanted to do it is uh, if Unreal would ever change something on their Unreal build tool, it's likely that uh, some other project or even this project will update uh, the plugin and so we would much faster benefit from each other instead to uh, closely implement things on a single repository. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching it. And remember that we have a Discord channel. Uh, it's linked in the description and join if you want to know more about this implementation or you have any question. So thank you very much again. See you next week. Bye.